well, seven and a half years ago, I was working for Menards and uh, didn't have a lot of family time because I worked a lot of hours. The biggest turning point was like within a month of the Winter Parade, um, we had a, well, the son was what, probably three at that time. Three. So, he was three at the time. And I was doing the, right, Does what does a dog say? Woof, what does a cat say? Meow. What does mommy say? I love you. What does daddy say? And he said, bye-bye. Um, I was like, hmm, accurate. Because Dan worked very, very, very long, very, very strenuous hours. Um, so I had gone, you know, to Dan and said what Weston had said. And um, that kind of probably put the the nail in the idea of I need to spend more time with the family. And even if that time, I mean, granted, we put plenty of time in here, um, but our time is different here. So our it can include the family. It can include um, the kids stopping in and being here. It can, it just looks different than working for corporate America or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when she told me that story, I pretty much felt like a failure as a father because I thought my goal as as being a husband and a father was to work hard to bring you know as much money home as possible so my family could enjoy life and when he said that phrase of bye-bye even though I was being successful in one area of being a father and a and a husband I was failing elsewhere so I knew I had to make a change uh, but one thing I did do is during the winter parade, we came down um, to watch the winter parade, and it was like five below zero that day. We came down a couple hours early to get a seat, and we actually sat on the steps of the post office straight across the seat. I've never been to the winter parade before. Um, so while sitting there, um, I saw all these people coming downtown Chippewa. And uh, by the time the parade started, there must have been 20,000 people down here, five below weather. I'm freezing, everybody's freezing. And I, well, I saw the building, this building for sale across the street. And I figured, well, if somebody just sells hot chocolate during this one day, they could probably make, you know, some type of business. So then that got my mind going on, if I bought that building, what could I do all year? And I never realized how much tourism comes through Chippewa um, so I started thinking about things and thinking about things and with uh, tourism with Irvine Park and the tourism with Lineys and Olson brings in a lot of people for their ice cream. I thought a candy shop would complement the tourism business in town, which would eventually bring in more tourism and everybody would be successful in, you know, the businesses that, you know, Supply to tourists. Um, what did you What did you know about making candy? I purchased candy uh, for Menards for a little bit in my career, so I knew that candy sells. Um, one of my favorite memories is was going up to Hayward and different candy shops, and it was such a treat to go into a candy shop. Those, as a young young kid, those memories were just embedded in me. Um, even going to the old five and dime Ben Franklin, you know, you know, when you get a quarter and you could buy a few different pieces of candy, those were like my most prevalent memories as a child, who I was with, where, you know, where we went and got candy, who I was with when we did that. So, um, when we, decided to bring in a candy shop we really wanted to try to focus on making this place memorable for kids and their parents and kids and their grandparents 